Hi everyone. G'day guys. We just wanted to update you all on something that happened over the weekend. Yeah, a bit of a stressful couple of days, wasn't it? It sure was. Um, we, there is no worry or concern. It's all uh, been resolved. The, the story has a happy ending. However, it's a really important story to share with everybody because it could save another dog's life. The only reason that um, Lily's still alive today, yeah, is because other people had shared their own stories. So on Saturday night, we had to rush Lily to the emergency hospital uh, with GDV, which is now I'm going to read it out because it is such a long. <laughs> That's um, why I put it on you. I'm yeah, like, I'm not pronouncing that. It's gastric dilatation. Volvulus. Very well done. Now, in layman's terms, bloat <laughs> yes. and stomach twist. Mm. Yeah, in, in the US it, it is known as bloat. Mm. It is uh, it is fatal. Like if it's yeah. if you don't get surgery within um, a certain number of hours. It's only it, it is only a very short period of time. When we dropped Lily off, the surgeon was saying you know, 70% of the dogs survive this. And I was like, what? Seven in 10? That doesn't sound very good. Mm. Um, however, long story short, they went in, they did the surgery. It, they said that we must have found it very quickly because there was no damage to the stomach. There was no damage to the spleen, uh, no damage to the surrounding um, tubes and blood vessels. So it was a very clean surgery. They didn't have to remove or cut out any dead tissue anywhere, but that's how quickly it can happen. They twist, the stomach twists, it cuts off all the circulation and organs start dying and tissue starts dying. So her stomach was twisted 270 degrees, yep. wasn't it? Just off 360 degrees, yeah. Which, which just... means it completely seals off both ends. Lily went in late on Saturday night in, and um, had an x-ray straight away to confirm that it was GDV, um, which it was, and then she went straight into oh. surgery. I always just, um, you know, assumed that it had to have been from something, you know? Mm. And it was a shock to hear the vet say they don't really know. They know that these things can cause, but so there's definitely so things sure. to avoid, yeah. um, which can cause GDV. But unfortunately, um, in some certain breeds, uh, especially the giant deep-chested breeds, which is Lily, uh, who she's a, she's a giant Great German Danes, shepherd. Yeah, you know, the big. Uh, it, it can pop up uh, with from nothing. Yeah. You know, it just purely is their body type. That's really scary, isn't it? It is scary because if there was something to attribute to that event, yeah. you could avoid it. Yeah, and it is recommended to avoid um, eating, uh, feeding your dog and then doing strenuous exercise straight afterwards. Mm. Um, it's also recommended to avoid uh, giving your dog a <coughs> meal that they can um, eat super quickly so things if like slow fe feeder yeah slow yeah. feeders are recommended the other one that can cause it is also having a big meal and being stressed um, mm. and and anxious so those are the things that are recommended to avoid but it's also not the only thing that causes it mm. and it does seem like it can happen very sporadically and randomly lily is definitely a dog that is in that top category of, or at, at highest risk. Well, <laughs> she's the typical shape and size mm. for that condition. Yes. It's common to see it in, in those kind of dogs. I remember um, hearing about it for the very first time from one of our daycare um, dog owners. And one had sadly Ooh. lost their boxer to it. Mm. They subsequently had another boxer who was coming to the farm and they had given us 
you know, these are the things to look out for because their poor family had already experienced the tragedy of it. Like I've, I had heard of it before, but it was the first time that I was really looking out for it, mm. you know? Um, and then I was looking out for, it for, you know, all 200 dogs. <laughs> Uh, because we had a lot of deep chested yeah. breeds that would come to the farm. They're usually the, the really athletic dogs, you know? Yeah, and we would we were doing strenuous activity all the time. So, you know, if they were coming to the farm, I guess maybe they might have had a big breakfast meal or anyway. Either way, it's always been on the concern. Lily is only here with us today because of the incredible work that Sash, our local vet hospital, did on Saturday night. The most important thing is for us as owners to be aware of what the signs are of GDV. So the three main signs that have always stuck in my head is the dry reaching. Mm. So it's trying to vomit, but nothing comes up. So in Lily's case, there wasn't even any bile. Yeah, nothing. Nothing Nothing's at all. She but just she's making a full sound as if you're really expecting, trying you're to, expecting something to be mm, on the floor. But nothing but comes out. Zero, no yeah. liquid, nothing, completely dry. So that's a really important sign. Because um, often when, you know, a dog has an upset tummy, which is something that maybe some people who aren't aware of GDV might um, mistaken it for, uh, if they do have an upset tummy, then they're going to vomit and, or, you yeah, know, something bring up. something up, um, yeah. even if it is just bile. But in GDV, nothing comes up. Um, mm. Now, the second sign is... They are in excruciating pain, so they're going to show that by being super anxious, yeah. very worried and uncomfortable. Um, now in Lily's case, she was pacing the floor, yeah. she was trying to lie down in about 20 different positions. In, in, in a space of five minutes, yeah. like she's just up in and down, up In and places down. she would never lie down. Yeah. She was just... Uh, she didn't know what to do. Her usual routine is she goes to her bed and she just drops for the evening. That's right. She? she has her spot, but, but on this was, occasion... She was up in about five different spots, all sort of facing us and, yep. and panic panting and, you know, wouldn't settle. We would just started raising alarm bells. Mm -hmm. So very clear and obvious that she was distressed yeah. and in a lot of pain. Uh, so the third sign or the third thing to check um, is their abdomen. It's going to be, you know, bloated or distended. For everyone at home who has no idea what that feels like, mm. you just want to make sure that if you can press into their tummy and it feels nice and soft. If it's really hard and, and like they're tensing, that's bad. So yeah. you're not going to know if it's, you know, unless you're trained to feel it, you just need to know what it feels like normally which is very malleable and soft and um, you know easy to press in whereas if it feels like they're really tensing and, and hard but also visually you are able to see it because it um, often happens in deep chested dogs um, they're usually incredibly narrow um, you know in that mm. lower area um, and that was one of the things I could see on Lily is that she was no longer narrow in that area. So she was quite um, bloated and large and time is absolutely of the essence. You know, you need to get them in ASAP. They just can't um, muck around with it at all. Mm. Obviously you're working against the clock to save your dog. But even in this instance where Lily has been saved, um, because we got her there so quickly, um, it has reduced the damage to all her other organs, which yeah. is really important. Any deep chested breed um, is susceptible to GDV. I think the scary thing is that um, we could have very easily just thought, let's just see how she is in the morning. It'd be completely normal and, and common to have that 
thought process? We had also on the Friday um, been preparing for uh, being flooded in. That's uh, right, yeah. We, we were gathering lucky, resources. Lucky we weren't. And, um, you know, we have means to get through the flood if there is an emergency, um, you know, in terms of the bus. However, um, you know, those kind of barriers sometimes might play with your mind and yeah. and you might think listen let's just wait till the water goes down and yeah you know like we won't we won't go through the flood waters yeah we're driving through flood waters at night is, alone you know it's definitely not so, recommended do not do it like all the stars were aligning for lily um yeah. on saturday night it all worked out however we just wanted to express how you know we're hoping that through sharing this experience it may help yeah. another owner with a the similar case with their dog and you know give them the yes. the ability to make the right decision and be informed about it and you know be able mm -hmm. to live on an extra however long with their dog because it's only because of several people that have shared their stories Mm. Um, that Lily is here today. Yeah. So you don't want to learn that one through experience. You want to learn that one through someone else's experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hopefully a good one like, this, like one. this one. Exactly. That's what we're doing. Yeah. When I was there at the vets, they said those um, you know situations where it, to avoid these things, mm -hmm. exercise after eating, you know, large meal, eating quite quickly. You know, all those kind of things. Lily fit none of those descriptions. Mm. Lily's a very slow eater. Uh, I have to put her off by herself and I feed her first and the last dog's usually finished by the time Lily's finishing her last bite. So she's a very slow eater and there was, that, so there was no cause of concern for any of those, you know, signs that people generally look out for. The interesting part that I thought was that the fact that the vet said, we actually don't know why it does it. Mm. We just know that it happens and it's quite common for mm. these kind of breeds. And that was a little bit more scary than if there was an actual reason why mm. it happened. Mm. So that kind of just makes me feel that you've got to be on edge all the time looking mm. out for it. And if you can identify or keep in the back of your mind that that dry reaching without anything coming out is a, is one of the telltale signs and to act immediately mm. we should also mention that um in some countries um at the time of dissexing they actually staple the stomach so that it can't happen in the breeds that are susceptible to gdv here in australia we don't do that mm. like it's not even that um talked about not even unfortunately um so Lily has now had that one stitch, one stitch, that's just yeah. quite incredible, that um, has stitched her stomach to the wall. Um, and that means that she can never, ever get this again, which is... Well, it's oh. supposed to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. It's... It has that's to be why, pretty high statistics to prevent it, mustn't it? Well, you've got to have a few things working against you. But basically, they put a stitch through the stomach lining and against the abdomen wall. And it's not a dissolvable stitch. So it'll stay there for a little bit of time. But by the time the stitch does eventually dissolve, the body has made a connection with the two mm. bits of tissue and it should hold it in place. Mm. Uh, the problem would be is if she did strenuous exercise or had too big of a meal or got bloat again, then it could pull the stretch, uh, pull the stitch before, uh, before it's, it's healed. Formed properly. that bond between right. the two. Yes. Tissues. Yep. Um, but yeah, in in some countries, that is recommended at mm. dissexing, and because it, it is such a simple procedure, really. A simple procedure, and it could most likely will avoid a life-threatening incident. Absolutely. That is brought on suddenly mm. and is very quick and aggressive yep. and also you know the other part that is a bit concerning is the fact that it is one of the more expensive surgeries that they do and I know that there would be many people that just would have to say goodbye 
because they don't have the money. Mm-hmm. It's a it, it it's a very sad yeah. truth about. It probably pet would be something. I'm sure there's lots of people that are already across all of this. Mm. You know, we're not. But maybe there might be some people that are not. Um, but it could even be something that you might want to look into, even if you have pet insurance that they cover, they cover it, GDV. Because yeah. it's a big one. You know. Um, some yeah. of them, some of them have limits. Pet insurance has a limit mm. of X amount or whatever. Yeah. So. Mm. That was yeah. that was that was the hot topic uh, in the waiting room at the time. After everyone heard the estimate when they when I came out of the room. Mm. <clears throat> Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a good thing, isn't it? Or it's, it's, it's just a terrible situation for a dog owner to be in, honestly. Um, anyway, Lily is um, a happy, positive story or outcome for... The hardest thing for Lily now <laughs> is keeping her quiet. She's not sure why she's, she's not allowed out of the house this morning. She's she? not happy about it. So she only just came home last night. Yeah. Um, so that is Tuesday. Oh, sorry, Monday night here. Yeah. Um, so. And today's Tuesday. So she is already not happy about <laughs> being on bed rest and yeah. kept inside. She um, heard that ranger start to go feed. <laughs> Everyone and she's just like at the door barking. Yeah, I could hear yeah. her. From Let me out. House. Let me out. Um, Didn't you, darling? So we do have to try to keep um, Lily gotta keep quiet. quiet. Got to keep it dry. Standard um, post mm. operative procedures. We've it's, had some major surgeries here. Know you know, like Rover, <laughs> Tilly. Um, yeah. I don't know who's got the biggest one so this, far. This is you reckon, one. Lily? Yeah, Lily's. this is the big one. Tilly, Tilly is up there but mm. this is uh, the bandage is still on mm. but she's a big dog and they had to open it right up to get mm. in there and look at everything so mm. yeah because they've got to check that um there's no jam- damage yep. um to any ins- other inspect organ all or... the all the tissue and the surrounding areas yeah. they've got to have, Nerves a, have a good and, look yeah yeah uh, very so. very lucky that nothing else was damaged so though. lucky yeah mm. i can't believe it i was so stressed on saturday night like you know, I just was, couldn't, I definitely didn't sleep. Um, you know, Lily went in and um, it w- they, we were told it was a four hour surgery, yeah, weren't so we? What, what time we go in? 9, 9 p.m.? Yeah, yeah. and... Um, they called us... They, they called, called us it at, one, oh. but we were thinking it was going to be more like 2 a.m. Um, yeah, that so we they would, called it 1 a.m. 1 a.m. said it went well. Yes. So but that's that's kind of all they said, as if because they said they won't really know ultimately, but they just called and were like, "Yep, it went well, it's all clean, she survived." You know, she yeah. she woke up because uh, that's obviously some of the big concerns about it all. They just don't survive yeah. the surgery. Because usually with the surgery, any planned surgeries, they don't want any food in their belly. They don't want all this other stuff going on, and obviously. This is, uh, an this is an emergency situation. Surgery, so the risks are higher again because mm. all those things have been mitigated. And also all the damage to other parts, like, you know, I think mm. spleen was a big one, wasn't spleen it? Spleen removal is quite common after mm. DVB, D- GDB. GDB. Yeah. And <clears throat> a lot of the time, if it's been twisted for long enough, everything dies. And that's why the dogs don't survive, as in... All the, all the nerves and uh, blood flow and all the tissue dies and they can't get it to flow again mm. into those areas. So it's, it, it is quite drastic and very surprising to see just how quickly it can unfold. Yeah. But you're here, Lil, aren't you, darling? <laughs> Look at yeah. her. She's so happy to be home, the poor thing. Oh, yeah. Because when I went to the vet, you know, I was sort of just expecting that we'll go in they'll do a quick assessment you know they'll let us know what's going on and she was pretty much just whipped away from me ducked out the back i didn't see her again and next thing i know i'm having a third interview saying we're going into emergency surgery sign these papers and i was like 
Yeah. I don't even get to go up and give her a, give her a hug and say, you know, you'll be right. Nothing. Just that, yeah. was, that was a bit of a a shock. You know, completely unprepared to potentially never see her again. That was that yeah, was hard and to deal um, with. you know, obviously we didn't go to sleep. We were just sitting there <laughs> waiting for the phone call because. Um, it is such it a major have, surgery. It could have been a phone call. And many saying, dogs don't survive. So, yeah, you know, we advice. know of some um, dogs that haven't. Uh, so it is very stressful. But, um... <laughs> it's so funny. That's Lily telling off Miss Violet. As she does, like a commando roll to she escape She did, her. and then like goes, Ooh, it's so good to have you back, Lily. <laughs> we missed, we missed that yeah. attitude. Yeah. Um, yeah, all the dogs are happy to have Lil back. Yeah. It's good. Life is good. So that's it, I guess, isn't it? I think, I think we've covered everything. Yeah. It's a, it didn't, we didn't really want it to be. Like it's kind of felt like it was a bit of a sad one, this one, but it was supposed to be a happy one. It's got a happy yeah, ending, but it is. I think we were just reliving the stress and and the you know the angst of that that night. It was, but we are so we are feeling so happy and oh, for, fortunate, and um, it could not be oh, oh goodness a better outcome. Um, obviously, oh goodness, wow. it's a very happy it is. story. Yes. Because there's a happy ending. Lily's right as rain. She's back on the farm where yes. you know, she's at a happy place. And, and hopefully um, this video might, um, you know, help another um, dog. dog owner out there. Yeah, just like someone else sharing their experiences has helped us um, save Lily's life. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Moosey is so crazy. Oh, Mr. Boy. Oh, Mr. Moosey Boy. It's a nut bag. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> oh, buddy, 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 buddy. Come here, buddy. <laughs> say hi. I just wanted to say oh, something. Oh, you say hi, buddy. Oh, oh yes. Look at him. <laughs> Like when's my turn to be on camera? Big lovable boy. Right now. Right now. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well. Nope. It seems like Moose has had enough of videoing for today. Yeah, we're standing still for too long. Look at these two sweet boys. They are like that dog. He's a nutbag. Everyone's like that dog is a nut bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, he is so cray cray. Good boy, Tank. Good boy, bud. Picking up like a baby. Uh -uh. Yeah, well, let me just get in this side in case the camera's not. <laughs> He's a funny dog. He's such a big boy, isn't he? Ah. And he yeah. jumps around like he's a cat. <laughs> Where's your mate? Oof. Not you, he's a big kitty cat. Oh, Mr. Moose. Oh. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. Hello, darling. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'll just stand over here. Ugh. Choppy chew, look behind, at you, buddy. Behind the scenes, filming day. <laughs> <laughs> just trying, just trying to make a nice video. Gotcha, gotcha boy. Okay, Tia Tia. All right. Oh, man. Okay, okay. Hello, 